You know, one of the things that I think we're forgetting lately in our society is that the very people who started all of this way back in the, the 18th or even the 17th century um, were people like James Madison or before him, Roger Williams here in Rhode Island. These were very devout, spiritual people who cared deeply about their own religious beliefs and the welfare of their fellow religionists and their own churches or whatever. Um, but we need to remember where they were coming from. They were coming out of a time where they had very real fears of what happened when government took sides in religion or adopted only one religion as, as the uh, officially approved religion. They remembered the lessons from England, um, which we supposedly fought a revolution to become free from. Um, they may have remembered a Rhode Island woman named Mary Dyer who was hung on the Boston Common for the crime of being a Rhode Island Quaker and having the audacity to return to Boston when she was told Quakers aren't welcome there. That was at a time early in our history before the Constitution when the colonies still didn't really distinguish between <laughs> government and religion. So there was a lot of legitimate fear about what's, what will go wrong with this society if we don't keep government and religion in their separate spheres. The, the thing we often overlook today is that the separation of church and state is one of the principal things and, that was created to protect religion from government. It's also there to protect government doing its job from religion to keep them separate, but it's in the long run, it protects religion from government. And I really think that we're forgetting that lately. And uh, we, I, I we think, need, we need to go back to some of our ancestors who worked very hard at this.